Hey, this is Tyler White. There's a ton of videos out there that talk about how to do survival with nothing or how to do survival with a ton of gear. I want to hit the sweet spot where we do education heavy survival with just enough gear. So that's what we're going to talk about today. All right, so what do you really need in the backcountry? Well, in life, in the backcountry or in anything, you always need shelter, water, food, fire, which is also heat and cooking, uh, medical communication, the base level stuff. So you can either provide that primitively by building your own shelter, flint napping your own knife, creating your own clothes, or you can bring just enough kit that you don't have to spend as much time flint napping a knife because you brought a knife or as much time creating a shelter because you've got rain. And this can be important, especially if the weather sneaks up on you fast. Right now we're in northern Utah where there's been a ton of rain lately. It was snowing this morning and then it rained and then it stopped and now it's getting kind of warm but there's a lot of wind and it's going to start raining again and it's going to get really cold tonight. So I have to be able to adjust to that super flexible weather. Now, if you go out with just nothing, this can be extremely dangerous because you may not have 45 minutes to four hours to build your shelter and you might need it in the next 10 minutes or the next 15 minutes. You may not have all the time required to build your friction fire and you might need it faster than the weather window allows. So be smart, always have the basic gear with regards to shelter, which includes what you're wearing and always bring what you know Always bring the things you know you need. Don't just rely on it all being there when you get there or you're taking higher levels of risk. So what have I brought? All right, so today I brought some basic level stuff that will cover multiple functions. I've got an army poncho laying out on the ground. Why a poncho? Well, just like fire, a poncho does multiple things. A fire will heat you, it will boil water, it will cook your food. A poncho will keep you dry, it will be a shelter, it can be the external layer for a sleeping system at night, it will also keep your backpack dry, it can also be a backpack. So it covers multiple functions. And when I talk about this gear, I don't want you to lock in on just the fact that it's a poncho, I want you to think about it like a tarp, or a poncho, or a big square piece of the headliner you cut down from your vehicle when you were uh, stranded some square piece of cloth that can do multiple things is the way that I want you to look at that. Okay, so we've got a poncho, I've got a Versa cloth, and again, this is just a four foot to five foot square of wool. Um, I use these, this wool one when it's cold, I'll use a cotton or linen one when it's hot. I use this to carry duff material, to carry a canteen, to keep my legs warm at night, it serves multiple functions. I've got two shemogs. I only really need one, but I've got a couple techniques that I want to show you that require two, so I brought two with me today. I've got a bandana in my pocket. We'll pull that out in a bit. I've got a poncho liner. Now, this poncho liner can be, remember how I said this covers multiple things. It's not just a liner. It's representative of other things. It can be a blanket. It can be a sleeping bag that's zipped into in half, like it's just a insulative layer for sleeping. I have, for the shelter on my body, a wool sweater, a wool vest, which I like to kinda keep stuff from flapping around, and then just a, I don't even know what to call this. this is, they call it a cold weather flannel shirt. It's just a wool shirt that I got from the Canadian military that works kind of like an overlayer. It's really good in dealing with smoke, fire, and all that fun stuff. And then lastly, I have the, the complete overlayer. This is a uh, Fall Raven, the G1000 cotton pullover anorak. Any cotton anorak will work. I know people always say cotton kills, only if you don't use it right. Every piece of clothing has its purpose Use, when used properly, it works great. There's a time and place for cotton. That time and place wouldn't be in the temperate rainforest of British Columbia or maybe up in Upper New York, but here in the desert, it's amazing. It will uh, suck water away from the wool clothing on the inside, which is usually there because of sweat, and pull it to the outer layer, level uh, layer, to the outer 
layer itself and then you can use fire to dry it off so it can get wet you can wear it dry you can use fire to dry it that's part of the reason that i like cotton my canteen and my morse pot this is the morse kohansky pot and this is the clean canteen i don't need both of them but again i'm going to show you some techniques this weekend where if you have a single walled canteen this is i'll show you the technique for that and if you have a pot of any kind with a hanger, I'll show you the technique for that. You only need one. I brought both to show you different ideas. Um, I've got some snare wire because it's just so easy to have it rolled up in the liner of your hat or in your wallet or in your survival belt. And it does so many things. So we're gonna talk about snare wire. I've got a hank of 550 cord, which is 550 pound parachute cord. I will show you what a hank is and how to make it. I've got some gloves because experience has taught me that you get your hands messed up when you're grabbing on trees and ripping on stuff, it tears your fingers up. So I brought some gloves and I brought a saw so I can show you how to make a buck saw. It's really easy to have one of these little saw blades inside of your belt or to roll it up inside of a Morse Kohansky pot. And there's a ton of bang for your buck with this super lightweight saw and two bolts that I can turn into a buck saw. Lastly, I brought salt. I love the expression that says the most experienced outdoorsman doesn't bring food, he brings seasoning for his food. But having said that, this salt is so that at day two or day three while I'm out here, I can retain cognitive function and still be able to talk to you all in a way that makes sense. Because if you go three or four days, you start stumbling on your words, you start slurring, unless you have salt with your water. Okay. In addition to this, I do have a big lighter. I brought this for safety reasons. And I want to show it to you. The way that I like to configure a big lighter is a clear big lighter so that I can see how much fluid is inside of it. And that lets me know if it's full or not. And I have a band of road bike tire on it, which doubles as kindling. So if it legitimately starts to snow rain on me and throw slush at me, I've still got something that I know will burn with a lighter that I know works in case of an emergency. What's better than one lighter? Two lighters. <laughs> okay. So I always have the two lighters with me. Now my goal for this weekend is to not use them because sometimes you will be in a situation where you don't have a lighter. Um, if you, if you're flying and TSA takes your lighter or if you are, I don't know, you're a POW and they took it away from you, you need to have the skill set to turn the stuff around you into fire. But if you're just doing this any kind of recreationally, always bring a lighter. All right, that's the t sum total of the gear. Oh, lastly, I got a knife, as you can see, a knife. And the often shown but not often discussed shelter that you wear. I am wearing long sleeve shirt that will stop the sun from burning me a wide brimmed hat that will keep the sun from burning my face. I have pants that can handle run, running through the brush. <clears throat> I've got mountaineering boots. Usually I come out here in sandals, but I know that the last few nights that it has been slushy snowing and freezing at night. So I know that it is smart to bring this. Um, <clears throat> on a shelter note, Oftentimes people are only one layer away from being warm. So if I think about what do I need right now? Well, I need what I've got on. But tonight, if it does start to snow, I'm gonna need all of this stuff and potentially that one extra layer. So if I throw what I've got on with my wool, my vest, my other jacket and the other layer, and then put the poncho over the top, I should be able to make it through the night. Maybe not sleep comfortably, but not freeze to death tonight, even if I don't have a fire. And that's what you should bring out as a minimum. Enough clothing that you can sit still at nighttime and not freeze to death. Anything in addition to that is just icing on the cake. Okay, this is the kit, the kit that I brought. For the next three days, I'm gonna show how to make fire water shelter food and take a survival situation and turn it into a comfortable primitive living situation. So stick with me.